their typical kind of late game, uh, I think we can call it greed, where they just see a play and they just assume it'll work out and nobody stops to think, does it really, uh, is it really worth the risk we're taking here and what if it fails? And some of these safety checks and then maybe just slightly more, uh, not hesitation, but slightly more patience, I think is necessary for HTK in the late game. Well, still time for them to learn it yet now. So far what we are seeing, just about the exact same picks and bans, but there's an adaptation, the Lee Sin removed on the first rotation for H2K. Okay, maybe that means they just want to draft jungle a little earlier here on the side of uh, H2K, really get that favorable matchup themselves. Hmm. Let's see, the Zed ban, now that hasn't changed, so Fnatic clearly keeping to their guns. This leaves Varus open once again, though. Has to be the Varus early, uh, I would imagine, unless the Graves has really risen in priority that much that you would early lock it in. <laughs> Odo's having a little bit of fun with it, but yeah, it'll definitely be that Varus this time. Uh, of course, you have to think it's going to immediately then go back to Reckless and be the Jin pickup. You would think uh, Fnatic, when put under heavy pressure, have whipped out unconventional picks. Even at this very moment last year, when Fnatic returned from Katowice, that's where Reckless was playing all that Jin, right? Where nobody else was playing it. So uh, you could technically see him uh, pick something else here, but Fnatic, they're saying, you know what? The problem wasn't the draft. <laughs> it was just the early game. Well, there you go. Well, we'll have to wait to see if it changes this time around. And I think it's good you mentioned the the early, uh, the pre Katowice kind of buff thing too, because yeah. H2K, they look like they definitely were the benefactors of it this time around. And now they've changed things up a lot in the Malzahar for. Yeah, Chip. last year, Fnatic, they went to uh, IM Katowice and they came back a lot stronger. They went for the kind of the late season surge. Uh, H2K went to Katowice right now. And we'll have to see if they get stronger. Hopefully for them, they do. Uh, similar pick and bans here. Uh, Syndra has an answer to Jace. Obviously, don't want to wait with that because then you get the, the ban on that in the second phase. There is no jungle picked up right now, so we're at least hoping for adaptation on the side of Fnatic. Yeah, there we have the Lulu. So now Fnatic's bottom lane is yeah. all rounded out. Back to pick uh, ban phase two, I Yeah, they don't pick up the early Kha'Zix here. They realize that to get a jungler in the game, it's actually better to pick a support that can match the push in the bot lane, because that can enable many more junglers to do their job. It doesn't matter if you pick Kha'Zix early, but then you draft a Brahmin bot versus Karma, you will just get pushed in. Now with the Malzar locked in, obviously they know the push power of the HTK bot lane, and they know they can at least somewhat deal with it on their own. Yep, so there is the Graves ban by Fnatic. It's matched by a Rumble ban of H2K. Mm -hmm. Obviously, both teams yet to pick up their top laners. That t tends to fall towards the last, but Jungler's also not gone yet. So we'll see what's up next. The Ivern banned away by Fnatic. H2K, do they ban another Jungler themselves or another top lane, I should say? Yeah, they could kind of hope that Fnatic op opt in for first dibs on Jungle, and then H2K need to dig deeper, but then H2K get the preferential uh, top laner. So they could squeeze that pool right now if they maybe ban Maokai, pick Nautilus themselves, if they want to do that. Yeah, Gus has played a lot of junglers this split too. I, I don't think he's going to have too much trouble finding something that's still available in the pool. I mean, he even picked up the Warwick in the game. <laughs> yeah. Don't uh, think it's coming this time, but yeah. you know, I can well, hope. There's the Maokai ban. So this puts pressure on Fnatic. Do we get the priority jungler to make Broxa shine? Or do we uh, uh, find an answer for Nautilus? Because it does look like HGK would just love to play the Nautilus again in the top lane. Yeah. Fnatic, maybe they'll grab it themselves. Still, they would give over more jungle priority. You see, I would. I was thinking. If I was Fnatic, I would just go for Nautilus here instead of the jungle ah, priority. But it's going to be the Elise. So we actually saw Yankos going back to it IEM. So it's yeah. locked in now for Broxa. It's uh, much more prevalent uh, over in, in a lot of the eastern regions uh, to see that Elise and, and we, people really utilize the snowball potential, you know, potential early Moby boots um, to really take control of the map or, or just have the pick potential from the jungler. But now if you look at H2K's composition, if they round it out with Nautilus Kha'Zix, it's a fine draft. Uh, it's a composition that has a mix of AP and physical damage. It has three damage dealers, maybe three and a half if you count Malzahar, and it has tanky frontline. And it has targeted lockdown with Syndra QE and Malzahar uh, ultimate. So technically, well-rounded. Yeah, sounds like they've definitely done their homework once again. Seconds tick away, uh, and one thing that was still left up and available was the Shen. That would also provide quite a lot for yeah. I think team. I think Fnatic has, the, because the Fnatic has the counter pick on, on top here, HDK may fear like a Trundle pick into this Nautilus, but I still think it's the best option of the ones remaining. And there it is. So I've proven you're right, or at least proven that they agree with you there, Crepo. HDK, lineup all locked in, solid laundry list. Arrow the box is ticked for them. Over to Fnatic, the last pick is going to be for Soaz. What does he take to complement this squad? No. Rumble available, clearly anticipating this. Oh, yeah, that's also a, a meta pick that has been carrying over slowly. The Gragas in the top lane. It's locked in. Yeah. You will see that one for Fnatic's side. So it looks like these guys have a pretty solid, honestly, early and mid game on the Fnatic's lineup. 
Yeah, it's definitely, it's not as absolute as last game. Uh, I'm not as well versed in the Gragas Nautilus matchup to know who gets it. The push early, I think it mostly depends on which jungler is around and how much pressure there is. If, if kind of Odoana wants to brute force, I imagine he can get the lane pushed. But it's not as clear cut here, um, especially in a, neither so in the bot lane. And it's also not that it's not that easy for a Kha'Zix to abuse, for example, an Elise, even if there's lanes to get pushed. Like, Graves can really abuse people in the jungle because he has a sustained clear, uh, has a kind of a lower CD gap closer, and has AoE on his, like, pellets for Raptor invades. Um, to walk into an Elise's jungle, she need to know where exactly where she is, because if you walk into Cocoon, you're screwed. Well, I think Yankos definitely has to know that one, so we could see a very different early game than we saw last time around. Fnatic did adapt, not in the first rotation, but they definitely mixed it up after the fact. We'll see if they can fire back in game number two. H2K made a very convincing win on the board for this team, not without mistakes, but they really gave Fnatic almost no chances to get back into that game. And if you think they are going to be able to do it again, H2K win is the hashtag you want to be tweeting at LOL Esports. But if you believe in Fnatic, hashtag FNC win one more time as we get ready to load up into this game. Yeah, looking for redemption here on the side of Fnatic. Early game jungle on Broxa, he has shined so bright in the past. Brighter than a diamond. Challenge release in place in that early game previously. Can he do the same? Can he mimic that performance on the Yelise? He's going to have a tough task of it up against Yankos, up against this H2K squad, fresh off IAM, fresh off a big victory in game number one. We'll find out what happens as they're about to lay it all on the rift. Fnatic trying to fight back in game two. Yeah, one guy's excited. And then everyone else gets excited. And then suddenly everybody starts clapping. Funny how that works. And we right. see the adaptation here from Fevervin. Uh, because he's playing against an Elise, an early aggressor with uh, CC, he has to run cleanse. So there's no like defensive exhaust versus a JSL in, in, in case of the 1v1. So yeah. Summer is useless in a 1v1. Um, maybe cleansing exhaust, so that's it. Yeah, so was, ghost last time. So I was going for cheeky dash oh. of the wall here. Ooh. Nuclear knew what's up. Oh, I like this. So I was waiting, was waiting uh, in the Dragon Pit in case nuclear path upwards. If he uh, goes into his own jungle right there. Keeping all the options locked, but Nuclear took the safe route, went back. Mm -hmm. And Ward's going to stay on right now. And now that they know, yeah. now that HK knows Fnatic have made moves down bottom, they get themselves a deep invade for some wards. Yeah, and Yankos and Oron can actually start on the enemy Raptors here. Ooh. Once again, yeah. this time no one's at home. As you this said, time, you have to know where the Elise is. Yeah, they have AoE, and it looks like Caps and, and Jezzes are going to leash the Raptors for Broxa, essentially dividing the map in two. But Soaz is playing a tank that should be able to survive, and he's also just going to hover here, I think, to watch for this invade. Or not. <laughs> he took a leisurely stroll through it at the very least, so this will end up being the trade of jungle camps. We'll see what that turns into as the game gets underway. Caps actually hanging around this side. Sends the shock blast. He's just checking if they're if they're up. They moved slightly, so technically they, he could know. And I'm not quite sure. I didn't see any pings here. Yeah. Kind of map split here. Jesses will be late to lane. It does give the push to HGK's bot lane if they want to take it. And then it allows, uh, the, again, that deep ward from Che if he's comfortable going to river. But he has to be careful for where the Elise is, of course. Because Yankos is spotted right now. Look at Che. Reaction is, he was, he was pathing into River to go back to his own jungle, but now he knows he can just keep clearing Raptors into red. And that means that now Nuku and Che have to stop pushing. They had the option to go there, but they know they can get ganked at any point, so they have to be very careful. It's nice for Fnatic. It already slows down the tempo a little bit of this game and makes sure that they can't get rolling the same way they did last time around. And more importantly, Broxa has yet to pass a single ward, so... The Fnatic is playing with much more information, and that's why Nuclear and Che, again, they're yielding the push here. Uh, that's something they're very good at as a bot lane, uh, knowing when to yield pressure and knowing when to kind of push on the advantage. But we see a much more even early game in terms of pressure. Oh, yes, we do. Cracking some Jezzes. Let's see if they can push this one in themselves. And There's no vision for either team outside of that tri brush in this bottom lane, so maybe we could see Broxa making early moves. And it all ties together because there is more push on top and more control on bot lane. It doesn't allow Yankos to find and reveal Broxa in this particular matchup as well. And that makes Fevin a lot more scared. Look how he's playing the same matchup he was last game, Syndra into Jace, but he's taking a, a much different approach here. Because he can't just kind of, I call it like donkey push. It's where you just close your eyes and you just spam the minions and you, you hope the enemy jungle is not there. Like he has to actually respect the possibility of ganks. 
Definitely playing it back. A lot more safe this time around. We won't see the early snowball yet for H2K, at least not in the same way. Moto and Soaz just poking each other up top, but that's not going to be an action-heavy lane. I really do want to keep eyes on Broxa this time around. Such yep. a different game for him already. And you really can't blame him too much, but he just got nothing last time. Well, Yakus was actually making fun of him in uh, one of the rollouts earlier here. Some good combo stall here. Feven just found Caps. Caps didn't find him back, so he's going to eat another Sphere here on More the return. Autos. Oh, Rox is there. Oh, he's going to have to cleanse that cocoon right quick. It was all a ruse. It was all a bait. He missed the spells on purpose. Just to bait him into fighting a little harder. Burns that summoner spell. It'll be back up. So worth running cleanse, cleanse though here. Because uh, it allows you to play so aggressive. Because you know he can always get out of the cocoon. Odo and So has both a little low on the mana right now. A lot of vision for H2K though throughout this river and the jungle entrances. It allows Yankos to path through here yeah. relatively safe. And in fact, he's matched on level with Broxa. He's trying to find Broxa in his jungle. Still on the first clear here. He got him. He oh, jumps him. in. That's a lot of damage. The isolation coming through. But he doesn't run cleanse himself. So no cocoon sends the void spikes. And Broxa's skittering under tower. So as is there for defense. Yeah, because they knew Cap's base. So they knew the invade was safe. And the only one that collapsed was the Gragas. So that's why Odawamna was there quicker. You could see the pinks come out. Like, they were ready for this play. They were guessing that Broxa was there. If not, they would take away his Raptor. So it would be a win-win play. As long as Yanka's got the support from his team and he got it again. Yep. Gonna force Broxa back to base a little earlier than he would have liked and gives over those delicious Raptors. Yanko's still trying to keep this jungler on yeah. the back foot. Could be great here if Reckless and Jezus can find a base because then you can get Serrated Dirk upgrade but you prevent or you block Varus from getting Dirk plus tier. The uh, other way to do it is just to keep, keep him in lane as long as you can and then stall out past the tier gold. But if you force him back here early, you may not actually get the tier pickup. Yep. And slow things down, definitely. Steam, that's the last thing Fnatic want. Be a little bit more behind on the 8-ball, rather H2K, I should say. Broxa, still keeping eyes on him, but he's hanging around mid. Yeah. He realizes he still has a little bit of Raptors. No, they're all gone. They're all gone here. Sad uh, days. <laughs> Everyone wants more Raptors, especially those pesky mid laners, man. Because yeah. those babies give you hella XP. Yeah, why not Krugs, though? They just keep on spawning. Well, those, those are boring. Those yeah, are they have to take. Yeah. I've, I've lost my love. If when I lose my love for Krugs, you know something's wrong <laughs> with the design. Man, that's definitely dark. Unfortunately, let's take a look at what happened in the last time around. I think we all kind of know the story, but Broxa did get back on his feet with a couple of kills at the very least. Yeah, but he was super far behind in experience, and it was a pressure game. And right now, we need to track because these guys are, are, are pivotal again because this game is bang on even. 100 gold advantage, not even uh, for Fnatic right now. And Broxa. He's still looking for early picks. He needs to capitalize on the cleanse being down in mid. Otherwise, Yankos will obviously get some good scaling in here with those upgrades. Yeah, mid lane definitely seems like the place to be. Yankos himself having a little bit of trouble with the wolf camps, but he should be able to finish him off, or maybe not. Holy He's moly, waiting. that was close. He's waiting for his abilities. Definitely got to see if Broxa takes another trip down the mid because Febim doesn't have that cleanse for so a few more seconds at the very least. And he is playing up, but he's been playing it out as safely oh, as possible. Yeah. It's hard to snowball this He's lane. always leaning to the side where Broxa is not because they have the deep vision. You know, they have a ward on red buff and then they have a ward on raptors. They know exactly where Broxa is in terms of which side of the map. They don't know what camp he's clearing, but as long as Feverin leans left and he reads Caps' gameplay, he can always predict when he's getting ganked right there. That's why it's so hard for this Elise to find a mark. That's why you really need to respect the least players that can cons consistently get kills. Because they're working magic. Like, they're really reading the game very well. And for Broxa, he's unfortunately only going to be able to read the fact that there's not much in his jungle. Except the red buff spawning back up, so... I'm completely corrected. Down in bot. Nuclear and Shade continuing to trade. Now they know that they can push up and match a little bit of this pressure. There's a lot of... Fnatic vision in this river, including the Tri Brush right now. But Chase playing really aggressive, sends the Voidlings out, yeah, and a piercing arrow nails really Reckless. Really good poke right here, especially kind of when they're almost hitting level six. Jay is super close to that level up. At that point, you could even see flash all ins happen. Oh, might be soon enough. Because the beauty of this combo is that you can flash R into then the Varus ultimate, and then you can buffer the silence, keep people locked down, and then your Voidlings take over town. Like a Yanko snuck around by hopping over the pit, he's going to be able to get an Ocean Drake early for his team. Still, yep. it's definitely a much slower paced game than the last time around because even though there weren't a lot of kills early, HDK just had so many advantages on the map and now they're just trying to find little ones. The gold though is still bang on even. Yeah, HDK is, is definitely fine with this. They're, they're definitely never going to get super out of scale, I feel like. With the Varus, Syndra, and late game, they have damage on their jungler, so uh, at least falls off harder than Kha'Zix. It should be definitely okay for them to take it slow. They also pick up that dragon. That's something Yankos did plenty of times at IEM. 
Just need to see what uh, pressure here they put, because every time they can guarantee their, their poke lands, because at level six, it's no longer feasible to dodge forward, right? Because you do, would walk into Voidlings and Mauser ulti, so you would always need to dodge backwards, which means every arrow you shoot, as long as Mauser's in range, you're gonna ill hit. Nuclear's finding out. He definitely has true aim on this, continually pushing in the waves. The gold, uh, the CS hasn't really been a huge difference in all honesty, but since neither AD carry is back, it hasn't really changed much, and the junglers haven't paid much mind as expected. Yeah. But they might be meeting in the jungle, no, or in the river, they're, I should They're looking say. for river control right now. Look at Che, he peels off, he pings the dragon, he says, like, guys, I have one ward, I could place it here, right next to my lane, but why don't we act as a team? They move into the jungle together. Look at Feveron, he was there as well, and now he's poking onto Caps. And Yankos jumps through. Oh, power unleashed a little bit too soon. As Caps moved away, no summoners burn. Yeah, but there was the potential of Yankos flashing in there uh, and going for the kill. That's the play they're setting up. Now Jezus gets caught. Oh, another grasp onto Jezus right now. Exhaust is down onto Reckless. Okay, wild growth, self-cast. And the Boilings are swarming, but Jezus is going to be able to whimsy his way away. But pings are already flying. You can see Yankos is smelling the blood right now. Caps and Brox are busy on blue buff. Yeah, he should get with the first move. They Leverage uh, oh. advantage and he steals the blue buff. Oh he, my he goodness, it. Yankos. That's that's massive right that here. That was great timing. Because they're really swinging open the map here. And it all started with, with bot lane. Turning on the action at the right time, they get the poke, which frees up Che. He goes with Yankos, covers him to get the pink ward. Then Feveman finds Caps. They know Yankos is quicker than Broxa because they got the vision. Then they invade together. Now Feveman can push for free because he uh, is sitting on that lost chapter. There was no blue buff handed over at all. Like, it's all these little moves that add up together that get you map control. And it, I love that HK is playing so much as a team. We barely see this from Fnatic. This is why the roster move from Amazing to Boxa was questioned, because there was never an issue with a single player. It was in their unity, in their teamwork, that a lot of questions were asked. And so far, no answers. Still raising those questions, but for H2K, you know, it's the same thing we complimented them for the last time around. Maybe it hasn't gotten rolling as fast, the draft not enabled it as much, but H2K are definitely looking good in this early game. Yeah, they can it, only tighten up a couple of those mistakes. Yeah, they definitely need, they have stuff to work on, but from like a, a communication point of view, they're in a much better state than Fnatic right now, because Fnatic, even as late as like three, two or three weeks ago, they were opting for like spell teams upgrades in lane over Sidestone. They were not helping each other. They can just continuously draft these lanes that get pushed in where their jungler kind of gets screwed. And they don't have the bigger picture in mind as well as teams like G2 domestically, not at tournaments, and H2K. Hey man, they beat some teams in best of threes. I was there, I saw it. Uh, but yeah, you're right. I mean, it's H2K, they definitely just have a much better sense of how to play together as a team overall. Fnatic do know how to pull the trigger though. Uh, that is one we go. of Soas's talents. He goes for an early TP behind enemy lines, hoping to catch Fevivin off guard. Stealthy Fat Man instantly forcing out the cleanse from Fevivin and he flashes away too for good measure. The barrel, now the cocoon still lands and they sink it in for a first blood. Teleport now coming in for Odo. Can H2K turn around this one? No, the curtain call's coming and they have to get out of town. Goes so as once again, Odawamne gets the knockup, Chains of Corruption lands, now Fnatic taking a little bit low and they're stopped up for just a second. They turn their anchors over to Broxa. Can they finish him off? No, Piercing Arrow, not enough damage, but Soaz going down, Caps going to the sky, but he is also going down to zero. Trade of kills, Nuclear gets two. Yeah, double kill here for Nuclear. This was actually the one of the first times we see a slow fight from H2K where they change direction mid-fight. Very rarely do we see this from HDK, where they take it slow, they kite and it's like, can we turn? Yes, we can. And then they don't greet too far. They really focus front line, disengage, they force Caps to flash in, waste his summoners, and go for a one for one. So this is actually a beautiful turnaround. I love this idea here from Soas. The problem is with the new change to the Gragas ultimate, there's a, a channel time on, or, or like a, a travel time router on the ultimate, so it's always possible to cleanse flash out of there. But right here, so many teams were just called disengage, disengage, and then right here with the beautiful ultimate from Odo there, HK actually realized we can turn. And they take it slow. You can tell the exact moment when Odo was like, wait a minute, I am on Nautilus. Yeah, I'm playing a tank. I just knocked up three people. There's a squishy Elise here. Caps goes in. He could have dropped much faster. If Nuclear's Q auto connected there, this could have been a third kill for HK. Yeah. Two for two, though, at 13 minutes into the game, it starts to go a little. More in H2K's favor, 500 gold being the difference, but no towers. Fnatic are looking to change that, but their minion yeah. wave is running out of steam. This is the, the old lane swap approach. When you lose the pressure advantage, the junglers invade. Beautiful punish here by Feminine. Oh, and he looks like he was looking down to take down Caps, or take him out, rather. No summoners available for either team, but 
Available yeah. for either mid laner, I should say. Meanwhile, there's still a lot of action down bot. Fnatic looking to split the map evenly. You know, we take bot side, you take top side. Please step away. If HK can aggressively defend this 3v4, they will get so much on top side, but it's dangerous. Oh, yes, it is. And the barrel knocks in nuclear. Oh, he's going to have to flash out of that. And Soaz goes too far. Nuclear gets a third kill. Ooh. And they save the tower. Meanwhile, Odo's unopposed up top. It's really greedy to flash that barrel after you get hit there. If that was executed slightly better, I like the play from Fnatic. Nuclear would have gotten him one shot and the punish was non-existent. The fact that he got his flash out right before Reckless connects a W means so much for this game. And they also get the tower first blood. Odawamne just keeps on pushing. Oh, he keeps on trucking keep right now. Yeah. Like, HK, they defend the split. But Jay, he's going low, going down, and that was a big spider, but Brox has still bought it. It's a one for one. Just another one for one trade. And meanwhile, there's wave crashes into the top lane. HK would be happy if Soa stayed around here to contest this. And there's this minute farm advantages here. And now in the mid lane, Caps is under pressure. Suddenly, Odawamne just oh, comes out of nowhere. The minions are gone. <laughs> yeah, unfortunate. And. Well, I mean, you see the difference in what happened last game. Caps still had some pressure this time, but it started to turn in HK's favor. Yeah, he, he's getting pressured in the Syndra versus Jace matchup twice now. Uh, first game very heavily because everything around him was falling apart. But right now, Fevin has been controlling his lane. Staying out of gank range, every kind of dash in from Caps got thwarted. And he got punished there because in the later stages of this 1v1, he is just bleeding turret damage. Yeah. Fnatic, they're bleeding turrets at the moment. Yankos Not trying his old tricks. This time it's an Infernal, though, that'll help them out. 15 minutes into the game. Yeah. Big right. for this team. I'm really loving the approach from H2K. They're bouncing back after a very tough IEM here. This was off to the hold already. They're, they're kind of face checking here. I think you can definitely call this out as a minor mistake. But the, the best play they've already made right here at this point. This is, again, H2K built up some credit. Um, they might over push their advantage on two sides of the map. This is something they need to refine. But they held bottom lane while getting top lane for free. They were forcing Fnatic into a, uh, a forced maneuver where they're trying to split the map, and they held on. And they just come up with a win so far. 2,000 gold, the lead. Two dragons ahead, one Infernal, one Ocean. Odo Omne and Soaz are battering each other, but Odo is definitely getting the better of it. Still sitting on similar items for those two, but honestly, the story is starting to look very different. And it's also different from last game. Yeah, the draft adaptations as well from Crawley. You know, taking away that Maokai in ban phase two to get the preferential Nautilus. Kind of hoping Fnatic wouldn't pick it up or find an answer as a counter pick. And Fnatic didn't. Fnatic went for jungle priority. They went for Elise over Kha'Zix instead of the Nautilus pickup. And they wanted to make it work, but so far Broxa, he's had some presence, but he hasn't been able to shut down Yankos at all. Yep. It does seem to shine some of the experience difference there. Yankos, I mean, this is a guy that is honestly one of the legendary junglers here in Europe still actively playing. And he just got a, he got another class in jungling by, by Karsa as well. It's true. He can still learn some things for sure, but he's taking them with him this time around and he's showing them to Broxa, hey, take a look at this. Down in the bottom lane, pressure keeps on mounting. Jezus and Reckless trying to finish off the minions on the wave, but look where H2K are heading all towards yeah. mid. They know it's only a couple hits left on the mid lane turret. Usually you would see mid lane push and roam bottom here to get the turret, but if it's this easy to take it, obviously you make this play first. Feminine did take a chunk of damage, courtesy of Caps, but doesn't matter. They got the tower. That's number two now. Fnatic unable to find anything back. Yeah, and then Nuclear needs to stay safe, so there's no curtain call catching him out, so he yields the pressure there. Uh, this may cost uh, H2K the bot lane tier one, but it's so important to open up mid early. Mm -hmm. Nuclear, man, four kills on this guy. He's really exploding this game. And Fnatic is, is kind of squeezed out of vision, because they could have easily had Box at least walk into lane in bot lane, uh, put some pressure, maybe push nuclear on the turret, but they're, they're so starved for vision, maybe just beyond river, that they're so scared to move anywhere. Does seem like Fnatic are cowed for the time being. Jezus and Reckless still trying to hang on to this tower. It's at half its health. Che and Nuclear are marching up, and there's the piercing arrow. Yep. It's gonna connect. Surprise, surprise. Odawana disappeared in the top lane. He's getting deep vision in the enemy jungle. He's also constantly ready to teleport, putting Fnatic on the back foot. Soas is in full vision, so his teleport will be very easily spotted when he's channeling it. So many options for this team. And now Odo's actually just going to start on Raptor Camp. Reckless and Jez's, they're going to give up the Ghost here. Yeah, Ghost Blade, exactly. Because again, guess who disappeared? Because Syndra and Kha'Zix are in the river right now. They disappeared. They're putting pressure on Reckless and Jez's, and they're looking to not get caught. Thing them out, so they spot him. But H2K, they don't need to take the kills. They know they can take the towers. Yeah, and tag team players here. Odo on the peel from top. He's now holding mid, because Fnatic's reaction is to go mid. 
trying to force it now. Nuclear pops this ghost play, looking to rush down towards this mid, but this tower is still very healthy. These minions are not as big as they would seem, and Fnatic are not even going to attempt to push on it. Yeah, they move back to the jungle. Now they get the inside track on the mid lane and the bottom lane. This could prompt an invade for Vision. There's not many wards left here, so it's actually just one deep control ward for some chip damage on tier two. And look at these map moves from HTK, constantly moving the pieces on the board. Che and Yankos moving wherever they need to support. They support a Feven with mid. They support a nuclear with bot. Oduwana took over the lane, clear duty in mid, while Feven roamed from mid to bot. At least in the early mid game, HDK, they look like a well-oiled machine. We'll see if it gets into the late, if it even does, how clean they can continue to look. But right now, they've given few opportunities, few avenues for Fnatic to respond. And they will give Fnatic a moment to breathe right here, because the side stones need to get refreshed. Um, more wards need to be uh, reclaimed, so as disengages here. Again, they saw Syndra move, and Feven knows that he's very likely being spotted by a ward, but it doesn't matter. As long as you can't get collapsed on, you're adding pressure. And as long as you arrive back safely into mid, hang on, Febby. Oh, he walks right into it, cleanse, flash immediately. Broxa tried to make the play. That's the one caveat. You need to get back to mid lane in time for to catch this wave right here, and you need to do it safely, or you need to be willing to give up your summoners. Well. Fevin showed that he definitely was more than willing to do it right off the bat. Both of them burned. Odoamne gonna last cone his way. Hopefully he thought away from the rest of Fnatic, but he's tanky enough yep. to not really care about it. Crouching Tiger, flying Anchorman. It was actually so sad for Fnatic. They see him move into the jungle. They set up a trap. He hits the blast cone, and he doesn't even get popped beyond his shield. He just keeps walking. Yeah, he doesn't really mind too much. There'll be another Infernal in a minute. Baron's obviously about to hit the rip. H2K, they've been slowly cranking up the gears here, slowly getting themselves into a faster pace of play. But Fnatic, it seems like the options are running out. And HDK, they might be ready to hit the throttle. Yeah, and, if, and Oluana wants to do a Soaz here. Both these guys can nullify each other's teleport. Uh, HDK is on the offensive. Just need to keep track of each other. Tier 2, still being poked down. It's like the laning phase just keeps on continuing. Nuclear just keeps finding arrows, and Fnatic are slowly getting pushed back into their base. Uh, because Fnatic is playing so passive and getting pushed in again, HDK are not making their traditional mistake where they have Odo on the join the team. But they feel like he needs to be part of them to be there engaged, to just force the fight, to take the win, even though because they're 6,000 gold ahead. He's actually just keeping Soas busy, and HDK are very cleanly picking Fnatic apart. Once again, and Fnatic, they're just not really even trying for anything. As you said, backing away time and time again. Now Infernal is going to come up in 10 seconds. It's looking great for HDK to close the series out. They're getting some uh, some good RNG on these dragons as well. Yeah, Two Infernals, the early ocean. The first dragon, the first ocean uh, to have is actually really good in the early game. Because that, that sustain helps you quite a bit. And then picking up two Infernals right after, it's like a dream scenario. Yeah. But luck does favor the prepared. And HDK definitely came more prepared than Fnatic did on this series. Does it? Does it favor the... I've heard that said to me a lot. Is it luck then? <laughs> I don't know. I feel like luck favors them. I don't know, maybe. They can get more out of it. I guess that's uh You get more out of your luck if you're prepared yeah. for it. If you expect the luck. Yeah, the bad and the good, crap. Fanatic, never lucky, man. Never <laughs> lucky, rubber ducky. <laughs> I thought you were going somewhere different with that. No. All right. I guess that's how it goes. So, Skull Crab Vision easily cleared away. Fnatic, they got it in the top side, though, so they have their eyes set on when are H2K going to be trying for this Baron. They may not be making the proactive plays themselves, but Fnatic know that they can at least try to counter engage. And they're looking to pull the trigger here because they have their top laner still on the top side of the map. They want to force mid or get the teleport out of the wall. But now, Soas is getting choked. Chains on again, and if he flashes right in, he does. There's a wild growth. Now they're caught in the choke point. Let's see if they can make a play. Yankos is not going to be able to get there in time as he was turned into a munchkin. Oduwamne walked down here looking for a pick, maybe. Oh, they want to back away. H2K don't want to let them do it. Nuclear pinging the side wave, so he's peeling off. Hopefully his team has heard that call. Yankos and Chain need to be somewhat careful. They're essentially invading 5v4. So as can't find a safe place to back. Yankos and Che still waiting in this brush. Fnatic, they could try to counter collapse here. Nuclear's not with the team. Yes, Nuclear's not with the team. And last game, this is essentially what cost H2K about 3,000 gold of their lead. Luckily, they had a big lead. Now he's joining them. Uh, he's walking back. Still not there, though, technically. No. Brox is a little bit preoccupied. There's a lot of damage there. And there's no CC except this cocoon. Hanging on the Baron, but Odo's gonna walk right into this face check. If you gotta have somebody to do it, the anchor is not gonna pick up who he wanted. Yanko's a little bit too low, piercing arrow, doesn't find Reckless on the back half. And the barrel's gonna separate Odo Wamne. Do Fnatic have the damage to take him down? Doesn't look like it, and he turns right back in. The curtain call, though, is gonna send him scurrying. Shea takes one, Shea takes two, Shea misses a third, and the fourth is intercepted by Nuclear. No damage, not enough for Fnatic. Yeah, disengaged, they have so much 
kind of room to play with here because Oduwamne is so damn tanky. Like when Soas threw him into the team, I think the collective faces of Fnatic was like, uh, do we really want this Nautilus in our team right now? Like, I don't, I don't know. Like, Guy's uh, pretty big. Yeah, he's... Spare Visage. He's hurting. Oh man, Sunfire Cape. And they found Jazz. Oh, whoa! He Moly, nuclear! And that's what they've been doing. HK have been setting up this Baron Vision. That's why they were so aggressively fighting here uh, around this red buff. <laughs> it's not like they were coming for a red buff. Yeah, and they're not pulling the trigger on Baron either. They're keeping it controlled right now. Not yet. Yep. Concede. When Fnatic calm, don't, no 50-50 Barons. It's uh, Misfits' head analyst's favorite quote. It was very sad today when Misfits went for multiple even odds Baron attempts. Oh, for HDK, I think these odds are pretty much in their favor as they're down half on the Baron. Caps Still, there's Caps. Seal. He sends in the Shock Blast a little too early, and that's going to be secured up. It was also not really hitting Blasher, uh, so... Yeah, kind of went behind it. It's very hard to steal when you're not <laughs> hitting the objective. But at least he, he knew. tried. Come on, Crepo. Yeah, I mean, I'm loving it. I'm loving it. I like... Some people think it's... Or did they feel pity when they see a team with like nothing to do and like no way of counterplay and, and they just want them to do something? I enjoy it. I like, I enjoy kind of <laughs> Fnatic's pain right here because it means that HDK is playing clean macro. If you leave your opponent with no options other than to make a bad play, you're playing League of Legends well. Well, HDK definitely seemed to be playing it well in Fnatic. They barely scratched the armor of Oduwamne, but Yankos, they've turned around here and Fnatic are caught up. Jez is getting pulled in. Nether Grasp been taken down. Nothing much Fnatic can do except go on the retreat path. And H2K just slowly, slowly marching to victory. Yeah, marching to victory here. I think they might run mid for the tier two tower right there. Jez has used exhaust early. Yankos held his engage. Much more patience here. Obviously, with a goal lead this big, it's very easy to compliment them for it, but baby steps. Oh, he canceled Caps. Oh, he found back. Caps. He doesn't know. He doesn't know he found it. <laughs> he actually doesn't know that he's in the rush. I think he's a little preoccupied on mid right now. Oh, when he watches the replay or somebody points that out, that's when you have like this moment of like, I knew I should have checked that rush. Oh, playing so well, he didn't even realize he stopped the backs. All right, so 25 and a half minutes, H2K, they knocked down an inner tower here. Fnatic, they've only got one in the entire game that was on bottom. Big Barrel comes out, separates, clears the minion wave. But H2K just don't really care. They've got themselves a Baron buff still available. That means they've got extra power to keep pushing the cannons in the back. Doing the work, heavy artillery coming out now. Odo's caught, he just sits in the cocoon. This guy is so big. Uh, this must be stressful for Fnatic right there. Would definitely recommend a visit to the spa after this one. You really do delight in other people's pain. <laughs> I mean, come on. <laughs> it was too you're easy. You're suffering, you have a roster change. You make a tweet that you're not going on vacation. What do you do? You go on vacation, like why? Just practice at home, play 10 hours of solo queue. I don't know, build team. Like, trust built team at synergy. There is no synergy in this lineup. You're not wrong, There's man. There's no synergy in this draft. These guys are not working together. They're just playing their individual game. Guess what? We're losing. Ah, go next. Yeah, well, unfortunately, it looks like that's the time for Fnatic, unless they can find something desperate. But they're 10,000 gold down at 6-3. to three. Not a whole lot of kills this game, but HK playing it out cleanly. You got to be careful there. Feb have been a nuclear chunked a bit, but there's a redemption. I mean, they haven't made the signature HK oopsie yet. They have quite the credit build up. 9,000 gold almost here this early in the game. What a clean game from HK. Can they bring it home? Caps is still around the side, looking for that all-important shot class. Yanko's taking a few shots, probably watching on eagerly as his team looks to finish the game out, but the curtain calls up. Odo's just gonna tank it all. Maybe not that one because Che intercepted. Caps on the side, chunks Che out, but still, it's just a parting shot. They can't find an opening on H2K, and now Caps, oh no, he jumps right in to his own death, and Febivin claims it. Yeah, I really like the aggressive flash there from Che because the Edge of Night Shield disappeared because of the Void Spikes. Oh, Jez's is gone. Before we can even get to it now, Soaz, he's isolated out as Yankos looks to turn for him once again. Patience, H2K, do not over chase right now. Very slow chase from Odo Wamne as he sends out the dredge line. You can't flash away from that one, buddy. And Odo sends the anchor on to Reckless. One more auto will do it. He finishes the job while Soez and Broxer are both on him. Meanwhile, H2K is down bot, finishing towers. Yeah, two KDA players, three team players right there going for the actual finish here. No, Yanko's keeping the one opposing member that's alive busy. There's an Elysian base, but he doesn't even count anymore at this point. What a clean 
calm and collected game from H2K. All according to plan, H2K say, as they take down the last Nexus turret, Yankos, he's gonna not even bother about finishing off Soaz because it's all Nexus, it's all victory. H2K, almost no snags on this one. They come back from IEM and they make a hell of a statement, dismantling, dismembering, and destroying this Fnatic team. GG, well played. Yeah, this must feel very good for the HTK organization right here. Clean 2-0 right here over Fnatic after struggling IEM. We go back to it all the time because these guys, they haven't had that much rest. They came back, suddenly you're playing on a new patch. You see a lot of people play hyper-aggressive, like Renekton dives everywhere. You see these Raptor invades that you luckily know about from IEM already, but HTK adapted some beautiful starts in game one. They really played to their win conditions. I loved seeing how they leveraged every single advantage into a team advantage, especially Che peeling off, playing with Yankos. Um, great improvement. I'm excited to see more. Yeah, this HGK team looks like things are only going to get better from them for here. And maybe they needed that wake up call at IM. Obviously, they made it all the way to the semifinals, but. They were so close. They were. Flash they challenged them too, and not a lot of teams did that, but they definitely shut down Fnatic completely in this series. There was little this team could do. Yeah, back to the drawing board. Uh, Fnatic working on the core issues one by one. There's not much time left here in the league, but they're still set up to make playoffs, and you can improve. Look at the growth that Misfits have shown in five weeks, right? Imagine if, with this much talent on, on, on the Fnatic lineup, if you could put some of that growth in there and uh, have these guys, like, enable the early game potential of Broxa, maybe, and then have Caps start carrying mid-game. Have the, the veteran leadership from Reckless oh, shine through. But not this game. As we hear familiar chants. That's how you know these guys are in a good place. They also have uh, the sneaker synergy, I think. Going oh, yeah. On. No, a lot, of, a lot of teams I am had it too. I love it. That's that's how, where I like where esports is leveling up. It started with jerseys that were all the wrong size, and then these guys were suddenly somewhat matching their pants. Now, matching sneakers. I think we're, we're up for a bright future here, Pyro. Oh, yeah. They're leveling up the gameplay. They're leveling up their sneaker game. These guys got it all for sure. HCK, they have to be so happy with this one. I mean, what a, what a hell of a performance for this team. No, yeah, really clean. Uh, a couple of throws in game one, much better in game two. Uh, they still have this tendency to keep Oduan with them when they have a lead. Uh, I think it's okay to bring your top laner in and just kind of brute force the play when you have a large lead. It is sometimes very hard in the game to assess when do we have that lead and when should we just play the conventional kind of one-force split with the push advantage and then the peel off. Mm -hmm. But for the moment, they're definitely sitting pretty. I mean, coming into today, it was kind of uncertain if them or the Unicorns were going to be the better team in their group. But, you know, Unicorns lost in a, in a close series, in a tense series. Yeah, the Unicorns, but HGK, big state. Unicorns took a way bigger hit at IEM than HGK did. Absolutely. Well, that's it to wrap up the day. We're going to step into the post-game lobby.